saying, uh, saying that, of course, we announced the, that Kubernetes was accepted into the Cloud Native Compute Foundation, and we talked a little bit about this yesterday. Uh, but we have an opportunity again to ask questions about what this might mean, what the uh, future of the Cloud Native Compute Foundation looks like, and how the Kubernetes community is going to engage with that. So I'm going to let our panelists uh, introduce themselves. So Chris, can you tell us how you are involved with the Cloud Native Compute Foundation? Hey, everyone hear me OK? Awesome. Um, so my name is Chris Anizik. I've had the fun job of playing uh, interim executive director for the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and have been doing a lot of work, kind of the boring work behind the scenes and making sure IP is transferred over, governance structure is properly set up for the foundation to get kind of everyone to play together nicely in the CNCF sandbox. Um, so feel free to ask me questions around that. It's been a hell of an adventure. And Patrick. Hi, I'm Patrick. I'm the CEO and founder of Kismatic, and I'm also one of the community organizers for KubeCon. Um, and I'm excited that we now have a sandbox to play in so we can play across different organizations and, and provide value. And you're one of our end user voices within the, the CNCF membership. That's correct. Yeah, I try to, as we do a lot of professional services work with clients, I try to make sure that we are their voice and advocate uh, for the, from, to the project. Jonathan. Uh, I'm Jonathan Bull, and I'm on the Technical Oversight Committee of CNCF. Um, I work at, I've been working at CoreOS for the last couple of years in a whole bunch of different areas, but most recently on so, a lot of our sort of container efforts and um, Kubernetes efforts. Uh, so pretty heavily involved with, with Rocket, our container engine, and um, Kubernetes upstream work, uh, particularly around at the node level. Um, yeah. And Alexis. Hi, I'm Alexis Richardson. I'm the CEO and founder of WeaveWorks. And I'm also the chairman of the TOC for the CNCF. Excellent. Closer mic next time. So, um, <laughs> mic closer. Uh, so we did have uh, a lot of information yesterday from Alexis when we had the, the panel then. Are there questions from you all since then that you would be you're, you'd be curious to have people answer from the technical side, from the big tent? We had a big tent question yesterday. Um, this may be a very short panel. Ah, uh -huh, we have a question. Okay. <laughs> what is TOC? Uh, I knew that somebody would ask this as soon as I said I it. it. Technical <laughs> Oversight Committee. So we have we all have our overseeing faces right now. So like the Technical Oversight Committee. <laughs> yes. We decide uh, which projects go into the CNCF, how they are run, and working with the people who run the projects. It's not a one-way thing. And also a few things like, uh, you know, what's the proposal process, what services we can offer them, risk matter. Right, oh, Mike, yes. right at your mouth. What processes we run, what the proposals process is. Stop being so British. <laughs> what services we can give people. So for example, we have a cluster. Intel have provided a thousand machines to run, so we have to figure out how, how to give that to the projects in the CNCF. But which projects are there? What is cloud native? How does it all work? That's the TOC's job. And of course, at the beginning, the TOC's job is to figure out what it means by, say, even potentially accepting. Because you know, what is we we heard yesterday from the foundations right. panel. Yeah, we have this concept of incubation. So every new project goes into incubation. So we have to define what that means and when you can come out of incubation. We have to define what that means too. We have to define everything from <laughs> scratch. <laughs> All right. How about more questions? We've really answered. Okay. Yes. Thank you. What is different? In well, a Trump's year? president. And <laughs> <laughs> no. God, I cannot get away from politics. America will be run by the CNCF. <laughs> <laughs> that I can get behind further than Trump. You will all be cloud native. Everything will be hilarious. I don't know. Um, we'll have more projects, maybe 10. <laughs> we will have defined how projects come in. We will have. Jonathan, do you have a. Uh, yeah, I think hopefully we're going to have sort of a healthy, healthy group of projects. Um, but we're very much figuring this all out um, at the moment, just in terms of defining what the criteria is for accepting a project and then what kind of support we can provide to them. So it's probably going to be initially a sort of case by case basis. Um, yeah, hopefully a year or so we have, you know, a pretty healthy set of 
<coughs> projects that um, to, to sort of give the, uh, an identity to what the CNCF is, so people can, you know, when they hear, they hear what Cloud Native is and then they, they hear that this project is part of Cloud Native, they can sort of have some expectation about how it might fit in and the kind of quality and that sort of thing. One of the things that we've uh, heard from Brian Cantrell, who also sits on the Cloud Native Compute TOC, is frequently about how we are at the peak confusion around container ecosystems. So, we're, okay, we're not yet at peak. We're still yeah, up and to the right. All right, we're still heading up and to the right. We're hoping to make that corner so that uh, we can decrease the amount of confusion about what container ecosystem and cloud native looks like. Uh, from like a membership user perspective, what do you, what do you think, Patrick, a year from now? Yeah, so I think if I'm framing it a year from now, I look at the boundaries of the projects. Like some people are really interested in just certain subsets of it. So having the project broke up in across different special interest groups where people can only focus on scheduling or only focus on you know, storage. Um, that's where it really gets interesting because you, know, you can really only care about scaling so you're part of that special interest group but you still get to participate and you still have a voice, you still have a cadence of meetings and collaboration across organizations. So that's where it really gets exciting you know, to me. And like for example, we're in the process of uh, putting together a special interest group for Windows so we can have Kubernetes you know, running on Windows and like that's exciting you know, for me to see it go beyond just uh, where it is today. Then that also gets broadened with the CNCF cross project. So not only would it be special interest groups about Kubernetes on Windows, you can start looking at Windows broadly in the cloud native ecosystem. So instead of simply uh, Kubernetes, you start looking at what other projects and how they fit in cloud native within the CNCF and the broader ecosystems. Chris, a year from now, uh, probably two things. One, um, I would love, we have this amazing cluster that Alexis has referred to. I would love, for example, to see uh, a bunch of transparent performance tests for all the different projects within the CNCF, maybe even potentially outside the CNCF, so they're all freely available for people to use, download, and play with, and so on, and actually run on, on the cluster. The other cool thing that I'd like to see is now that we actually have a foundation, um, building out the end user uh, community within the foundation is going to be huge as we uh, collect projects, because you know, at the end of the day, not everyone is going to be contributing um, to uh, the projects on a code per basis, but they're going to be uh, deploying it at the respective companies um, mm -hmm. you know, on a large scale basis. End user membership is a big thing that we yeah. haven't yet really started pushing on, but it is an important would, space. Hmm? Yeah, I would just say that I would really hope that in a year's time, um, the next KubeCon in, 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 in London in, in March of 2017 has you know, three times as many people coming, um, because all of this has worked out really, really well, involving all of you and all of us and everybody else. KubeCon London 2017 is non-binding. Okay. Now, Chris. <laughs> no, yes, yeah, sorry, Patrick. So as one of the community organizers, that's an interesting thing you touched on with KubeCon, like even transitioning those events to CNCF. So now it can be managed and we can co-locate. You know, for example, the next KubeCon potentially will be in Toronto along with some of the other Linux Foundation CNCF events. So, you know, you get to be around people that aren't only just hyper-focused on Kubernetes, but, you know, cloud native and other things all in one venue, one time. So that's exciting for me. Broadening the community is very much part of this view. Okay. Another question? Yes. Jack. Do you have an API? Do we have an API? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, Chris's inbox. So, to what extent, if we're participating in Kubernetes, mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of our major area of interest in this, does that, to what extent does that mean now we really should be much more interested in CNCF versus Kubernetes part of it? Okay, so let me repeat that so that we get it all on video. Um, if you're currently contributing and using Kubernetes and that's where your focus and interest is, how interested should you be in the Cloud Native Compute Foundation going forward? How does that, how does that fit? Anyone want to hit that first? Chris? You know, yeah. f for me, the way I would see it is, um, you know, essentially the CNCF becomes like a tent for projects like Kubernetes, right? And if you're familiar with uh, how Apache works, you know, there's tons of projects out there. You have HP, Mesos, they, they all kind of have their own respective little communities, but they still kind of consider themselves to be part of the, you know, Apache tent or, you know, we'll, we'll go for something similar uh, in terms of feeling, at least within, within CNCF. Cross-pollination yeah. across related and adjacent yeah. uh, tooling but, is very helpful yeah. too. Vendor neutral, very happy. Uh, umbrella for, for people to be under. 
<laughs> that looked skeptical. There will be I some other projects in CNCF, uh, probably. Yeah, and I saw the paperwork sign, so it's, it's happening. Things like etcd um, probably will be in CNCF. Um, some of the CNI stuff that Brandon talked about this morning. Um, so you probably want to keep one eye on that. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. So just really quickly, w one of the things for me is like, I've been doing open source software forever. Like I've been a member of PHP groups since like 1994. And the thing we always forget as technologists is all the legal things that we have to worry about. So even having a framework to work with other companies where I don't have to worry about antitrust issues. I don't have to worry about compliance issues. The foundation and their lawyers have that all figured out and a, and a framework for us to work collaboratively. Like That's really exciting because we can actually focus on the innovation, focus on the things that are going to help the end user. Um, and those are the things we tend to take for granted but are extremely important. This speaks to uh, one of the tenants that Alexis talked about yesterday, which is the CNCF is here to help the projects that are inside of it, not necessarily control and downward manage. So the Kubernetes community as it stands where things aren't broken, we aren't going to try and fix them as, as the CNCF. And, and, and also, you know, we're booting a foundation from scratch, essentially, right? So having the opportunity to help define what a foundation kind of looks in a modern era should be exciting, I think, for the, for the Kubernetes community. Like, you know, you, don't, you won't have a chance to like rip and replace Apache, for example. Which uh, brings to me another point, which is, um, so earlier we were, I was asked uh, in a meeting about um, things like promotion process uh, within, within the community. So if I want commit rights, how do I get there today? And the answer is, kinda. <laughs> the answer is, it's not a clear process at the moment, and there's not a clear progression or ladder for you to move up. You know, it's, you make some commits, and then you work with somebody to do, you know, to do some reviews and understand and grok the vision, but that's really squishy. So things that the CNCF may be able to help us with is, some, is something like defining, this is what a promotion process might look like with input from the Kubernetes community and, and core contributors today. So it's something we know we have a, a challenge in, and it's something we have an opportunity to fix with help. Or without help if we choose, but I'd like help. All right, other questions? Where's the beer? We're catching a flight. <laughs> right, where, where's the next flight? OK, seriously, <laughs> any more questions? Because we can get out of here early. For any concerns. Uh, For concerns, concerns, another one. Concerns. There we go. OK, yes. Okay, <laughs> 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 the Android <laughs> hacker, Andro oh, say that again, Android light switch hacker. Uh, yeah, that's Matthew Garrett. He works at CoreOS. Is he here? I don't he, he, was he, was he was downstairs, downstairs. wasn't he? Yeah, he's downstairs. Uh, Matthew Garrett. <laughs> okay, so thank you. We've handled that one. Any concerns about the CNCF or, or the Kubernetes? Um, <laughs> yeah. No laptops, pay attention. <laughs> well, the transfer of the IP, anything. Yes? I have one. So, do you plan to have any overhead on the meetings under your own name? Not much, no. <laughs> do you have any fear that some of them will become an embodied PS and be populated by vendors that are interest only? Um, if that happens, we will politely exclude them from polite conversation. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so there are, from all the foundations and working groups and standards right. bodies of before, we have things we can take that worked well, yeah. and then we have lessons that we've learned that we want to avoid. And that was some of the conversation yesterday from the foundations panel. In Go all ahead. seriousness, yeah. we don't want to become one of those sort of places. I mean, some of the foundations, um, there's a ton of places that have done really good work. I mean, ITF has done amazing things. Apache has done amazing things. but. The more that you um, organize, the more that you become a bureaucracy, and the more you attract bureaucratic people, and we would like to at least have a long honeymoon period before that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Professional meeting goers are not invited. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think a big thing for me is just having that shepherding process that you can bring people into the project and have kind of like, as Sarah mentioned, you know, a framework by which to indoctrinate them to the, the way we work. And as 
we see new companies, you know, come into the fold wanting to provide things like, you know, for example, the Windows support. Like, they have expertise in that. They want to be part of CNCF. They want to participate. And, like, having that kind of framework to, to bring them in, give them a chance to participate and is exciting for me. And it doesn't happen to have to be haphazard, and it can be all done publicly and with the invitation of anyone in the, from the user, community, you know, user uh, side of things to come and help and, and do things too. So it's just nice to have that basic framework in place. Anybody else? OK. More questions. Yes? I mean, technically, the notion of what the CNCF is going for is kind of baked in the charter. So there's kind of three things, right? It's a container, you know, packaged, dynamically, dynamically managed, and microservices oriented. Those are kind of the three qualities of, of the cloud native computing paradigm that we're going for. So projects would generally have to align uh, with those. But at the end of the day, the TOC is, is the group that will, will make that judgment call in the end. There is also language in that charter about cloud agnosticism. So the idea yeah. that it is across clouds and perhaps not immediately portable exactly as it is, but trying to make sure that it is, again, a big tent, to use yesterday's word. And one really quick aside there is that you know, all the communication from the TOC and whatnot are all public mailing lists that you can join and you can follow along and you can, and meetings that you can attend, phone calls you can be on. Like, so everything's in the open, so you can help kind of shape the, the project too, even if you're not necessarily a, a member or user. And that is actually something we expect and want, to be clear. It's not just that you can. We actually want that input. All right, other concerns or questions? Yes. Yes. I can, yay! Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, he asked us to think a year ahead. I just thought, like, a, you know, a couple minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Any other questions on that, or no? How we can help is definitely helping us decide, helping the Cloud Native Compute Foundation figure yeah. out what, what, what we want from it. Honestly, we really do want your help. I mean, this is not like just saying stuff, and the window for helping. You know, in detail and in principle is now. Yeah. It's not going to be there in a year's time. After that, it'll be other kinds of help, like yeah. here's a cluster or here's some, a documentation team. Yeah. But right now, we're setting the principles, so please get involved. Yeah, just github.com slash cncf slash toc. The, the meetings are open. The mailing list is there. All right, questions? Concerns? We're running out of them. All right, anybody have closing words? Thank you for coming. <laughs> the bar is open yeah. downstairs. I'm told the red line across the street has beer. Excellent. Anything else? That was the all for closing words, really. You want to <laughs> look pearls of wisdom? Well, just one last thing is like, you know, we now have the um, the Twitter handle and things like that. So you, you know, you have plenty of ways that you can reach out and and provide feedback, you know, about everything and try to like make the make the foundation be the thing that you want it to be. Like the power is in your hands, not some benevolent dictator saying it's going to be this way. So there is one more thing. So this is the last session of the day, and I think it's time to acknowledge that this whole event has been put on by a few people. Yes. Patrick. Yay! Um, this guy Woo! here, J JJ. Woo! And there have been people like Sarah helping and this gentleman here. So, please thank them afterwards and thank you very much. Kelsey, Kelsey, Kelsey. Hightower. And of course, the program committee. So I'll just keep thanking yeah. people. No, the, the whole program committee that helped us choose the talks, which underlying it all were provided by you, the community, which actually is what makes this entire thing possible. It makes Kubernetes possible. And in fact, uh, brings together the, the greater vision. We'll go big, greater vision of the cloud native world. So thank you all for joining us and have a great afternoon. So I just one ah. other one more thank you. Thank you all for buying tickets and actually coming. That was <laughs> that was very nice of you. Thanks.